Hi, this is Bruce McConnell of Locomotive Systems Training. Welcome back. We're still going to be a while on lo FRA Locomotive ins Inspection. Again, FRA stands for Federal Railroad Administration. That's a federal agency that oversees all railroads in the United States. So we're going off the rules and regulations that they have regarding components of locomotive we're going to talk about. So to continue on, this is part one continuing, LSTV-016. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. All right, battery boxes. Remember we talked about in the last video, you can start an inspection wherever you want and we're okay with that. But wherever you start, make sure every time you got that locomotive, start in the same spot. And that way you should end up in the same spot. And that way you don't wind up missing anything of importance when you do that locomotive inspection. All right, so continue on battery boxes. Well, we have batteries on each side of that locomotive. I'm going to step into my own shot for just a second. Here on the right side, again, there's that landmark letter F. And right over here is a vented very important, a vented battery box. We have the same thing. By the way, this picture is this picture taken from a different angle with the, with the uh, battery box unlatched and the lid actually slid open. As you can see, there's the battery in there. All right, and this one here is the one that's located right there at the front door, which is, remember we talked about the letter F, welcome one on the left side. We walked up the stairway Step made this one step up and that battery box is right here. There's the two latches you open up and again you have access to the batteries both on the left side and the right side of the locomotive. So let's talk about that. The purpose of the battery box is to house the batteries. Pretty straightforward. There's the FRA rules that deal with it. Defects or loose or missing fasteners. Remember, we the, the operating crew and maintenance personnel walk on top of this. It's a walkway. Okay. If I've got busted hinges or I got loose hinges or I got a bad latch or this latch was just is sticking up, somebody could trip, slip, trip, or fall, get hurt, that becomes a federal defect. The FRA is very, very finicky about anything that would involve the safety of the crew or maintenance personnel. They want to make sure they're well protected. All right, so defects, loose or missing fasteners, that'd be hinges, right over here, that'd be latches. That could be the condition of the metal right here, uh, that little door latch, okay? Cracked or broken wells, defective hinges, which we just talked about, defective latches, physical damage to the battery box. It's amazing how sometimes these things get damaged and you just kind of like wonder, how did that happen? But remember, if it doesn't lay flat, doesn't latch properly, and it's an uneven surface or it's a slippery surface, that becomes a federal defect. Once the battery box is opened up, you can check for loo loose, or loose battery leads. Uh, that would be a bad thing. And also any physical damage to the batteries. Their battery got frozen, they cracked, or they got moved around, they're cracked, or the caps were missing, or any other defect, you would write that up. Okay? All right. Uh, again, a little more reiteration about the stairwell. This is a huge area of concern regarding safety. Remember, mo a lot of these locomotives... That bottom step uses a switching step, so that changes a whole lot of attention or causes a whole lot of attention to this area. And I'll explain that in a second. But let's talk about the purpose. The purpose of the stairwell is to gain access to the front of the locomotive platform and cab area. The stairwell is equipped with two hand grab irons and usually has four steps. Most stairwell areas are lighted, some, however, are not. Most locomotive well most locomotive stairwells are also used as a switching platform, which I mentioned earlier. Now, if they have a light, the steps have a light, the light has to work. If it's not equipped with a light, then it has to have the handrails painted in a contrasting color. That doesn't mean they have to be white. They have to be just a contrasting color. Notice we have black, yellow, the stairwell area here is black, and the hand grab irons are, are excuse me, the hand stairwell areas are yellow, but the, but the grab irons are black. So that is definitely a different type of color uh, than the than the, than the air. So it's easier to see and easier to grab. All right, now there are 11 regulations in 231.30 that deal with the stairwell area. All dimensions from the top of the rail, also the width of the rail, the uh, the, the excuse me, the width of the step. Does it have a backstop? Uh, how many steps? Where and are they in line as far as the bottom step, the next step in, the next step in, the distances of the step, a lot of areas that they, that they now look at. So be very, very informed, I guess is a good word to use, when you inspect this locomotive in this area because there's a lot of things to look at. All right, let's move on. Here we go. So let's talk about these. Defects, loose or missing fasteners, cracked or broken steps, improper or incorrect steps applied, improper length, width, or 
backstop height. We've already mentioned that earlier. Uh, the edge of the tab is not painted in a contrasting color, if not illuminated. Okay, notice at night, these white stripes would be reflective and would reflect light. Okay, and if, you, if they don't, that becomes a federal defect. Uh, hand grab irons bent out of proper shape or damaged. A lot of times these stairwell areas will get sideswiped and they will literally shove everything either this way or this way. That naturally is a huge defect. Okay, uh, so that would also be reportable. Uh, hand grab iron is not painted, which you mentioned earlier, in a contrasting color. Not necessarily white or even yellow. Um, stairwell light not functioning or damaged. The stairwell safety decals damaged or not readable. A lot of times they'll have, uh, uh, you know, three-point contact, that type of thing. Remember, if it's a company or a state or federal decal and it's on there, it must be legible. Um, cracked, bent, or broken knee brace. You can't see it here, but there's a great big tube, about a four-inch diameter tube, that's welded to the, to the uh, wind sheet right here at the end. And it welded from there and it goes all the way up. That's the knee brace. And it's welded to the back of the frame of the locomotive. Uh, you got to look at those because sometimes the walls will crack, sometimes the, they'll get bent or damaged, and that becomes a federal defect. Uh, any physical damage to the front left or right windsheet or rear stairwell vertical area, that'd be this area in here. This is the area that supports the steps. So if there's any damage in there that were, where it could damage the step, where well, that person would step on the step and then fall down or, or fall off, anything like that could, would be a defect. Uh, any step not in, in compliance with the FR rules 232.45, 29, or 231.31. Okay? Okay? The next item we're talking about is the jacking pad. Okay? Let's talk about the purpose. The purpose of the jacking pad or pads, because remember, each locomotive has a total of four, one near each corner of the locomotive, is to support either half or all the way to the locomotive while maintenance work is being performed either on the truck's fuel tank or draft gear. Note there's a jacking pad near each corner of the locomotive frame for a total of four, like we mentioned earlier. Again, the rule, there it is, the defects, cracked or broken welds, uh, or any physical damage to the jacking pad. This is a pretty stout piece of iron here. Uh, you know what happens when they get damaged, it'll be a damage result of a side swipe. Again, if it is, you look down here for these broken welds and the physical condition of the jacking pad. Okay, move on. Truck frame. Now we're going to talk about this area right in here. That. We're not going to talk about all the components, which is a lot that are attached to this frame, but we're going to talk about just the truck frame itself. Okay. The purpose of the truck frame is to support half the weight of the locomotive. The truck frame also retains all the components necessary for proper truck operations. And again, you can see there's a lot of FRA rules that apply to that truck frame area. Okay, let's talk about them. Loose or missing fasteners, cracked, bent, broken, or damaged truck frame. Again, side swipes are a really good example uh, of, a, of danger to a truck frame. Uh, oil grease or other accumulations on the truck frame would all be federal defects. Okay? Now, again, uh, we want to bring your attention to this website. Everything that we have here, ladies and gentlemen, you can go out back and look at. You can look at the rules. You can also look at the guidance that the FRA uses to interpret the rules that we're cur currently going through. So here it is again. The web address is www.fra.dot.gov. Once again, www.fra.dot.gov. Once again, I want to thank everybody for coming and, and, and enjoying that uh, video with us today. When you get a chance, please take a few moments, go to lst-ca.com and take a look at our website. We've got new classes that are going to be coming out soon, and you're not going to want to miss them because it's really, really cool information. Once again, our web address is lst-ca.com. Thank you very much, and have a safe day. Bye.